Hi, this is Hank from Muma Media, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the Beach Tech DXA Micro Pro Plus. The Beach Tech DXA Micro Pro Plus is an external mic preamp for DSLR and mirrorless camera systems. It's an update from the DXA Micro Pro, uh, which was released several years ago and earned a very well deserved, uh, excellent reputation in the creator community. Before we go any further, I would like to point out that I have no connection with the Beach Tech Corporation. I purchased this device for my own money, and this is therefore my own and unbiased opinion as to its performance. Okay, first of all, the form factor of this device. It's small, it's relatively light. This has multiple connectivity options in, in terms of physical connections to, uh, for things like adding to a rig. So you've got this cheese plate on top, which is removable using the thumb wheel at the front. Uh, and that would leave you with a uh, quarter inch 20 thread uh, screw to mount into the bottom of the camera. Obviously you can mount things to this cheese plate. It's also got this um, rather nice and useful uh, cold shoe groove down the front so you could put a, an external video monitor on there you could mount a microphone whatever uh, underneath you've got a cold shoe mount for sticking straight into the cold shoe of your camera again this is removable uh, and leaves a, a sort of a receiver for a quarter inch 20 thread screw so you could mount a quick release plate for a tripod or whatever to that um, you've also got at each end uh, an additional cold shoe mount so those would be useful for things like mounting uh, radio receiver packs and so on so you've got some great options there for for mounting um, other peripheral devices etc uh, looking at the connectivity if we start on the back you've got a uh, micro usb port for connecting uh, a battery charger uh, one of the things about this unit which differentiates it from its predecessor is that it's got an internal battery which gives it approximately 10 hours of usage that is however without supplying phantom power uh, its predecessor did have a reputation for chewing its way through uh, pp3 9 volt batteries which made it uh, in some respects less than popular uh, moving around on the size of a unit uh, you've got connectors for uh, one XLR input, um, which supplies phantom power at 48 volts. And on the other end, in the corresponding space, you've got these four uh, mini jack connections. The top two are monos for connecting up uh, things like lav mics directly. They supply plug-in power so uh, that you, know, you can run a lav mic without a wireless um, transmitter and receiver if you want to and then underneath that you've got a stereo input and then next to that you've got the main output which takes the um, signal from the units to your camera's uh, mic preamp via a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack lead and two of those are supplied uh, the nice curly ones with gold plated connections which are great uh, one to take the signal from the unit to your camera and want to bring the headphone out from your camera back to the unit so you can monitor uh, audio that is actually going to your camera rather than just monitoring the audio that's incoming to this unit um, that's important because if there's any problem with connections between here and your camera you wouldn't necessarily be able to hear that if you were monitoring uh, from here it's good to be able to monitor exactly what's reaching your camera so you can uh, see for any problems there. Moving around onto the front panel, starting off on the left hand side, you've got um, two pad switches uh, with one for each channel, high and low. Low is a 15 dB gain and high is a 30 dB gain. You've then got the trim pots um, to, to make adjustments within that. And next to that, I don't know if you can see, but there are two uh, small LED um, overload indicators. They show green when you've got a good signal and go straight to red when your signal is getting too hot. Again, it would be nice to actually have some sort of audio meter on there or maybe a sort of three stage LED so that you've got a little bit more warning um, about when you're, you're likely to be clipping 
this unit uh, than, than it just going red. However, bear in mind this is an analog unit, so clipping in this device is going to be considerably less unpleasant than if you're actually clipping in a digital device. Moving on, you've got three switches, one which switch your, switches your output from the device to the camera from mono to stereo. So you may, for example, if you just got one mic connected, you might want to record that on both channels of your camera's audio. So you switch it to the mono input. Uh, if you've got two separate lav mics on two different talents, you might want to switch to stereo. That way you'd keep those two signals separate. Uh, and you could post-process them differently if you wanted. Next, we've got Phantom On. Um, so you can switch Phantom On or off for the XLR input. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't want Phantom On if you're not using the XLR because you'd be wasting battery power. Um, and then underneath, we've got the main power switch. Next to the power switch, you've got this, again, this LED indicator, and that works both as uh, an indication of when the unit's on or off. So again, you don't leave it switched on and waste battery power, but also uh, it serves as a battery life indicator and a charging indicator. So if we have a look at the battery life indication, first of all, uh, it's got three stages to it. And I'll just show you this little card that's included uh, in the pack. Uh, so it's got a, a 10 hour battery life uh, reportedly. And when that light indicates green, you've got uh, a good supply of, you know, better than uh, better than seven hours of good supply left. When it moves to uh, amber or yellow, uh, that gives you a two hour warning that your battery's low. And that's a pretty good uh, length of time to have for a warning that you're running out of battery. And then finally, when that indicator shows red, you've got an hour or most likely left, less than an hour uh, of battery remaining. So that's quite a useful indicator regime for telling you when you're about to run out of juice. And remember, you can't swap the batteries in this. The only thing you can do if you're running out of power and you need to keep shooting is to plug this into a USB uh, power supply um, from, a, from a power bank or something. When you're charging the unit, uh, it shows red when uh, it's charging and shows green when it's fully charged. So quite useful in that respect as well. Um, next, we've got this monitor button and that switches between being able to monitor directly from the unit itself or being able to monitor uh, from the camera. And that brings me on to the monitor in socket, which you can use that the second of those two curly jack leads to bring the uh, headphone signal back from your camera in back into the DXA. Uh, and that way you can actually monitor directly from the camera so you know exactly what's going into your camera. Or if you want to review clips from your camera, uh, you could also use it uh, for that as well. So um, quite useful to have that, that switchable monitor in there. And finally, you've got a headphone jack. And above that, you've got uh, your... Um, volume pot to control the output of a headphone jack. So quite comprehensive controls. Everything that you need is on the front. As I say, there's no menu diving involved whatsoever. In terms of the build quality of this device, I can only describe it as being built like a bit of a tank. Uh, certainly it's, it's, a, it's a nice feel, a nice weight, despite the fact it's very small. It's all metal construction. Um, it, you know, it's the kind of thing, if I drop this on the floor, I'd probably be more worried about what it did to my laminate flooring, uh, than what it actually did in terms of damage to the device itself. Um, because it is that sort of reassuringly solid sort of build. Uh, you look at things like the XLR input and the, uh, micro USB input and that's screwed onto the casing rather than simply being soldered uh, onto the uh, internal circuit board which would be the case in for cheaper devices and again that's an indication that no matter what you do in terms of pulling and yanking on those cables the connection internally is going to be maintained and, and you're not going to have to take this into the repair shop too often. One of the main reasons for using an external mic preamp when you're recording video on a DSLR or mirrorless camera is to reduce the amount of noise you're recording. 
I decided to devise a simple test to see what kind of noise reduction I could expect. I took a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and first of all recorded it through the BeachTech into my X-T3. I boosted the gain on the BeachTech fully to plus 30 dB and correspondingly reduced the gain on the X-T3 to minus 30 dB to compensate. Then I recorded the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus directly into the X-T3, this time with the gain set at 0 dB. The two audio files you're going to hear are the result. You're going to need to wear headphones to appreciate the difference. Now here are the files again with the gain on both boosted by 12 dB in Final Cut Pro. There's a clearly audible difference between the amount of noise recorded on each file and it's registered at around 10 dB difference on the Final Cut Pro 10 audio meters. I really would like to have seen two XLR ins on this unit, and I can't help feeling that Beach Tech have missed a trick there. And I think it would be fairly straightforward to move the four 3.5mm jacks on the one end round to the rear panel, thereby making room for the extra XLR socket. One of the clear downsides of this product is its price tag. It retails in the UK for around £229, which is significantly more expensive than many similar devices. Overall though, this is a really good solid device which I can recommend and if you're not using any sort of mic preamp into your DSLR or mirrorless camera and you want to improve that audio signal that you're getting, uh, I can heartily recommend uh, this particular unit. It only remains for me to say that I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below. If you didn't, don't bother, it's a free country. See you soon. In the meantime, take care.